Welcome to the SPSS tutorial for bivariate correlation. This is Dr. Zakiu, and in this tutorial you will learn how to conduct a bivariate correlation using SPSS and then use the SPSS output to write an APA results section. The research question that we will be considering for this tutorial is, is there a significant relationship between online university students' sense of isolation and perceived learning? Accordingly, the null hypothesis that we will be testing is, there is no significant relationship between online university students' sense of isolation and perceived learning. As you can see from both the research question and the null hypothesis, we are considering two continuous variables, the scores on the sense of isolation measure, as well as the scores on the sense of perceived learning measure. Thus, it's appropriate for us to conduct a Pearson product moment coefficient because it's designed to test the relationship between two interval level or continuous level variables. By conducting the Pearson's product moment coefficient, we can determine both the strength as well as the direction of the relationship between the two variables. Let's begin considering this research problem by analyzing the data in SPSS. Once you've opened IBM SPSS, open the data set in which you desire to work with. Here we are using the correlation practice data set. In SPSS, before performing a correlation analysis, it's a good idea to generate a scatter plot. This enables you to check for violations of assumptions, such as linearity and homozygosity. Inspection of the scatter plot also gives you a good idea of the nature of the relationship between the variables that you're studying. To create a scatter plot, from the top of the menu screen, click Graphs, then click on Legacy Dialogues, then click Scatter Dot. On this page, to progress, click the button scatter dot. The scatter dot box will appear. In this case, since we're working with a bivariate correlation, you want to click simple scatter. Click the simple scatter button to progress. Then click define. Click the define button to progress. Here you will define the variables under study. First, click the isolation variable. Here it's called community. Click the arrow button to move the variable into the y-axis box. Click the arrow button here to progress. Once you click the arrow button, you will see that the variable is moved into the y-axis box. Now you want to select your second variable under study. In this case, it's perceived learning. Selected perceived learning, again click the arrow box next to the x-axis box to move the variable into the box. Click the arrow button to progress. In clicking the arrow button, the perceived learning variable will be moved into the x-axis box. You can then click OK to generate the scatter plot. Once the scatter plot is generated in the SPSS output, the first step you want to take is to check for outliers. Check your scatter plot for outliers. That's data points that are very high or very low or away from the main cluster of points. Extreme outliers may simply be extreme outliers, or they may you may need to go back and check your data to ensure that the data was entered correctly and that there are no errors in the values. Note that outliers are serious because they seriously affect the data analysis. Some statisticians recommend that you remove extreme outliers from the data set, while others suggest that you recode them. Recoding and removing is not part, not within the realm of this tutorial and thus won't be discussed here, but it is something that you need to be aware of. Next, you will want to check your scatter plot for violations of assumptions. There are two violations you want to look at. The first is homostasticity. You want to ask, what is the shape of the cluster? Is it even? creating a cigar shape, or does it narrow out and then get fatter at another end? If you have a cigar shape, you, this indicates that the assumption is tenable. In this case, we can say that the assumption is tenable for our data set. The second violation you want to check is that of linearity. If you can draw a straight line through the main cluster of the data set, then you can say that this assumption is tenable. However, if it's curved in any way, then it's not tenable. 
Next, you want to inspect the scatter plot to determine the direction of the relationship between the two variables under study. The scatter plot can tell you whether the relationship is either positive or negative. If you were to draw a line through the points, what's the direction that it would go? Does it go left to right, upward or downward? If you have an upward trend, this indicates that you have a positive relationship. That is, that high scores on the x-axis are associated with high scores on the y-axis. If you have a downward line, this suggests that a negative correlation. That is, that low scores on the x-axis are associated with high scores on the y-axis. As we inspect this specific data set, you will note that, the, that we have a negative correlation because we have a, la a line going downward. We will verify the direction of this relationship when we actually conduct the correlation analysis. There's one more step that we need to do before we actually conduct the correlation analysis. We need to check the settings. Choose Edit and then Options. We are now ready to conduct the bivariate correlation analysis. From the menu at the top of the screen, click Analyze, then click Correlate, then click on Bivariate. To progress in this tutorial, click Bivariate. This will open the bivariate correlation box. Select the first variable you wish to study. Here we're going to select Community. The variable is selected. Click the arrow button to move the variable into the Variables box. Click the arrow button to progress in this tutorial. Now select the second variable under Study, in this case Perceived Learning, and click the arrow button to move the Perceived Learning variable into the Variables box. Click the arrow button to progress in this tutorial. Once you have moved both variables under study, in our case community, which represents isolation and perceived learning, click the options button to open the options box. Click the options box now to progress. Once the option box opens, Tick, Means, and Standard Deviations. This ensures that the descriptive statistics are shown in your output. Also make sure that Exclude Cases Pairwise is ticked. This will only exclude cases where that you have missing data on these variables. Using the list wise deletion, the other option, any case with missing data will be removed from the analysis, and this can severely affect your N. Click Continue to close the box. This will take you back to the bivariate correlation box. Make sure that Pearson is ticked. Remember, we are working with two continuous variables, therefore we can use a parametric statistics, which is Pearson, and then also make sure that the two-tailed is ticked. Remember, we have a non-directional hypothesis, so we are going to conduct a two-tailed test. Also, tick flag significant correlations. This will give us asterisks next to all the correlations that are significant. When you ensure these three boxes are ticked, go ahead and click the OK button. Click the OK button to progress in this tutorial. An SPSS output will be generated. SPSS output has been generated. The first step that you will want to take is to check the sample information and then note the descriptive statistics. You will want to check the N. Is it correct? If there's a lot of missing data, you will need to find out why. Note that the N for community is 433, and the N for perceived learning is 430. However, note that the, there are 426 cases, you can be seen in the correlation box, that had scores on both of the variables under analysis. So our N is actually 426. You will also want to take a look at the descriptive statistics box. This will provide information about the mean scores on both variables, as well as the standard deviation, which will be, you will need to report in your APA results section. When you are finished looking at this, this slide, please click the mean of the perceived learning score to progress in this tutorial. Next, you will want to assess the significance level. To consider the significance level, look at the correlation box listed as SIG2-TELD.
You will note that the significance level is 0 .000. Since this is less than our alpha level set at 0 .05, we can say that our results or our correlation is significant. Note you can also note that the correlation is significant by determining whether or not there are asterisks by the R value. On this page, roll your mouse over the significance level to see how you would report the level in APA style. When you are finished, click the mean of the perceived learning scores to progress. After you have determined whether or not there is a significant relationship between the two variables, you need to assess the direction as well as the strength of that relationship. Note, if you have a significant relationship, then the direction and the strength are important. If there's no relationship, then you don't really need to look at these numbers. Let's first determine the direction of the relationship. Look at the Pearson's correlation coefficient um, in the correlations box. Is there a negative sign in front of that value? If there is a negative sign, this means that you have a negative correlation between the two variables. If there is no um, sign in front, then you know that you have a positive correlation between the two variables. If you have a negative correlation between the two variables, you can then say that lower levels in one variable are associated with higher levels in the other variable. If it is a positive correlation, you would then say that high levels in one variable are associated with high levels in the other variable. In order to progress in this tutorial, look at the Pearson's correlation coefficient and determine how it should be interpreted. Click the right answer in the box next to the correlation box to progress in this tutorial. Now that we determine that we have a negative relationship between our two variables, perceived learning and isolation, we can look at the SPSS output to assess the strength of the relationship. Note that we determine the strength of the relationship by looking at the size of the value of the correlation coefficient in the correlation box. It's highlighted here. The, ra the range of that value can be from negative 1 to 1. A correlation of 0 indicates there is no relationship at all, whereas a correlation of 1 indicates a positive relationship, a perfect positive relationship, and a value of negative 1 indicates a perfect negative correlation. We can use Cohen's guidelines to further interpret this value. Note that 0 0.1 to 0.29 indicates that there is a small relationship between our variables. 0.3 to 0.49 indicates a medium relationship, and 0.5 to a perfect 1 indicates a large or strong relationship. Look at our value here. It is 0.58. So based on this, what do we know is true? Do we have a strong relationship or a weak relationship? Click the correct answer to progress in this tutorial. Finally, you can use the SPSS output to calculate the coefficient of determination. The coefficient of determination gives you an idea of how much variance your two variables share. It's easy to calculate. All you have to do is square your R value and multiply it by 100. In our example, the Pearson's correlation is 0.581. When squared and multiply indicates 33.76% shared variance. That is, that students' sense of isolation helps explain 33.76% of the variance in their scores for perceived learning. If you roll your mouse over the R value, you will see how to interpret the coefficient of determination. When you're finished, click here to progress in the tutorial. Now that we have looked at the SPSS output in a step-by-step -step fashion, let's look at how we use this output to write an APA results section. Here's an example of one way that you could write your results section from the SPSS output that we looked at. Take a few minutes to read over this. When you're done, click anywhere on the slide to progress. Thank you for taking the time to work through this SPSS tutorial for bivariate correlations. You should now know how to conduct a bivariate correlation using SPSS and use the SPSS output to write an APA results section.